Nowadays, it's difficult to imagine what America's military history would have turned out to be without the veteran B-52 bomber. This iconic aircraft has continued to be the American military's workhorse since the 1960s, and its formidable looming silhouette still strikes fear into the enemy's heart at the sight of it. The B-52, also known as the Stratofortress, is a long-range strategic bomber designed by engineers at Boeing. The aircraft replaced the Convair B-36 Peacemaker Intercontinental Strategic Bomber and has been in service with the U.S. Air Force since 1955. Like most American legend aircraft, the B-52's existence was driven by the urgent need to neutralize the Soviet threat during the Cold War. The primary task assigned to the American engineers at Boeing was the development of a reliable aircraft for the delivery of extremely powerful thermonuclear bombs to any given point in the USSR. Among other requirements, the U.S. Air Force's checklist included an aircraft speed of at least 298 miles per hour and a range of more than 5,000 miles. Nicknamed Stratofortress did not come about by chance, since the aircraft has repeatedly claimed many world records for flight range. In addition to its intended purpose, the bomber was also used to deliver weapons to various parts of the American continent. It was used for flights across the pole, as well as long missions over distances of more than 20,000 miles. The original design of the B-52 included a swept wing and four giant turboprop engines, which was the best option available at the time. In the days when the Stratofortress was in full swing, jet engines had already been around for over a decade but were still viewed as too fuel-demanding for use in a high-altitude bomber. In October of 1948, Boeing unveiled the final version of the B-52, the 464-49, with eight of the latest Pratt & Whitney JT-3 turbojets, which was later designated the J-57. These proved to be much more efficient than other jet engines of the time, although in a later modification of the B-52H, the aircraft nevertheless switched to the Pratt & Whitney TF-33 P3 turbofan engines, which provided it with better performance and even greater fuel economy than the J-57. After the USSR developed its first atomic weapon in April 1952, it took another three years for the first B-52, nearly 160 feet long, to enter service. The United States sought to demonstrate to the world its air superiority as soon as possible. Therefore, in January of 1957, the U.S. Air Force tested the expanded air refueling capabilities as part of Operation Power Flight, proving the ability to deploy nuclear weapons anywhere in the world. During Operation Power Flight, three B-52 aircraft became the first in the world to fly 24,325 miles without stopping. The latter was completed at an average speed of 525 miles per hour in 45 hours, 19 minutes, doubling the temporal result of the Lucky Lady 2, who made her trip around the world a little earlier in 1949. Two more B-52s present had been forced to veer off course due to mechanical problems. One of the key features of the B-52 was its ability to mount weapons and electronics in a massive glider that hadn't even been invented at the time. But at that particular point in time, the company could hardly have imagined that the bomber would remain such an important part of the U.S. nuclear armament with plans to still operate for decades to come. During the Cold War, B-52s were on round-the-clock duty at U.S. airfields. At the same time, nuclear weapons were present on board in order to deliver an immediate nuclear response to any possible attack by the USSR. And while the subsonic top speed eventually made the Stratofortress too slow for contested airspace, the advent of nuclear-powered cruise missiles made up for it, guaranteeing an extension of its service life and preserving a place of honor for it in the U.S. nuclear triad. To date, the B-52 is the only aircraft in service with eight powerful Pratt & Whitney turbojets capable of carrying up to 70,000 pounds of ammunition over a distance of approximately 8,000 800 miles without refueling. With such amazing capabilities, as well as a substantial gun magazine and modernized flight systems, it has proven useful in more than just nuclear missions. For example, the B-52A, nicknamed the High and Mighty One, and the B-52B, called Balls 8, served at NASA 
as test platforms for its experimental hypersonic aircraft X-15. Throughout its long life cycle, the B-52s have fought throughout the global war on terrorism. To include the bombings in Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom in 2001, and air support during Operation Iraqi Freedom, which began in March 2003. Recalling the old merits of these bombers, it is worth noting the following operations. Rolling Thunder, which was an extended aerial bombardment campaign carried out by the U.S. 2nd Air Division, the U.S. Navy, and the Vietnam Air Force against the Democratic Republic of Vietnam from March 2nd, 1965 to November 2nd, 1968. Arc Light. The United States deployed the B-52F Stratofortress from its bases in Guam to attack enemy bases, supply routes, and rear concentrations while providing air support to ground combat units. Linebacker 2, or Christmas Bombing, was a bombing raid from the 18th to the 29th of December 1972, during which 15,237 tons of bombs were dropped on Hanoi, Haiphong, and other targets during 729 sorties. Desert Storm, B-52 strikes were an important part of this operation. Starting on January 16, 1991, the B-52G aircraft took off from Barksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana, refueled in the air, struck targets in Iraq, then returned home in 35 hours, flying about 14,000 miles there and back in total. Desert Strike, from the 2nd to the 3rd of September, 1996, Two B-52Hs hit Baghdad power plants and communications with 13 CAL-CM AGM-86C cruise missiles during a 34-hour, 16,000-mile flight from Anderson Air Force Base, Guam, thus setting a record for range flight during a combat mission. Allied Force In March 1999, bombers fired at Serbian targets throughout the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia including the Battle of Koshari. The U.S. Air Force had found that the B-52 can be equally effective during ocean surveillance, helping the U.S. Navy in anti-ship and mine deployment operations. In two hours, several B-52s can control 140,000 square miles of ocean surface, and during the Baltops exercise in 2018, Bombers conducted mine-laying missions off the coast of Sweden, simulating a mission to combat an amphibious invasion of enemy forces in the Baltic Sea. Since the 1980s, the B-52H has been modified to utilize harpoons in addition to a wide range of cruise missiles, laser and satellite-guided bombs, and unguided munitions. Aircraft crews have perfected a smooth glide flight profile that allows them to overcome difficult enemy defense systems and launch a massive attack on their ships. The recent expansion and modernization of the Chinese fleet has forced the U.S. Air Force to once again rethink its strategy regarding the potential B-52 attacks on ships. As a result, the B-52 fleet has been certified to use quick-strike sea mines with the JDAM ER kit. This made it possible to lay minefields over vast areas with extreme accuracy, while remaining at a distance of more than 40 miles away. In addition to this, an ANASQ-236 Dragon's Eye underwing capsule has been used before, having also been certified for use on the B-52. This allows for quick scans of areas in the Pacific Ocean, looking for the presence of enemy ships and subsequently eliminating them promptly. It is further complemented by the Lightning Infrared Guidance Module previously used in the B-52 to detect ships. The U.S. Air Force has plans to upgrade the B-52's armament with the latest existing technology. The latest modifications will bring with them the ability to carry up to eight of the latest J-Series bombs, in addition to six more bombs attached to pylons under each bomber wing. The B-52 also requires a lot of new technology and internal system upgrades to keep it competitive. Therefore, the Air Force has already begun installation of new displays in the cockpit and an advanced radar setup with AESA. But the most modern element of the B-52's weapons would be hypersonic weapons, whose speed exceeds Mach 5. This, according to the U.S. Air Force, will make the aircraft as prepared as possible for tomorrow's battlefields. Despite the U.S. Air Force's active work on the long-range strike bomber program, the service life of the B-52H was still extended until 2045. That is to say, 
Even 90 years after this giant was first brought into military service, it still remains relevant. This is well and truly an unprecedented lifespan for any aircraft, civilian or military. After the stealth aircraft B-21 and F-35 clear the way, the B-52 will appear on the battlefield bringing with it a heavy dose of justice. What are your thoughts on the B-52's future? Will it successfully compete in strength with today's modern aviation? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more content like today's. Thank you and we'll see you in the next video.